Good, uh, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Paint Nights Online with the Waterloo Public Library. I'm Christine, and I'll be your host tonight. Um, before we begin, I just wanted to run over some things about paint equipment. Um, tonight's painting will be a landscape based on a scene sort of from Waterton National Park, if you've ever been there. Um, different paints and uh, well, different paints particularly have different properties. So you can see I've done this with two different colors. Um, this one uses primarily ultramarine blue and burnt sienna and a crimson. And this one uses phthalo blue with a vermilion red and burnt umber. Um, I'd like to point out that just to show that different paints react differently when you mix them. So while I'm mixing paints, you might have a different color as a result of the type of paint you're using. This paint, the ultramarine blue, turned very purple um, when I mixed it, whereas this one definitely came out a much stronger blue the second I added white. It almost looked sort of gray or purple for a minute, and then when I added the white, it came out quite strongly blue. So. Take that in mind when you're doing your uh, doing your um, paint selection tonight or when you're doing your painting and just know that there's gonna be some differences just depending on the equipment you're using. Okay, um, for other equipment today, I have my canvas here. My blank canvas is an eight by 10. Leave my brushes. Ah. I have my brushes. This is what we call a flat brush. This is a round, flat. I use this flat a lot um, and the rounds I use for some detail. So I have my palette. I have a glass of water not for drinking, but for cleaning my brush. I have some paper towel here, or if you have a spare rag, that's also good. And of course I have my paints. So this is sort of a beginner set of acrylic paints you can buy just about anywhere. So um, the colors I have, I'll, I'll name when I use them. Um, so that you'll know exactly what colors I'm using. But if you have slightly different colors, that's fine. Just know that, again, they might react differently depending on sort of the hue. I also have a spray bottle um, and I'm actually going to take that now and just spray my canvas just like that. doesn't need to be a, a, a you know extremely wet coat, but I find that If I do it, if I paint on a totally dry canvas, I get uneven areas or I get the paint drying too fast um, and that can make it difficult to paint. So give it a quick spray, wipe it off, just make it even. And we'll give it another minute there. Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about before we begin is um, brush care and cleanup. So acrylic paint is essentially pigment mixed with um, white glue. When it dries, when it's wet, it's water soluble. When it dries, it becomes a hard plastic. So for cleaning by brush, um, cleaning your brushes is also, also important for brush care so that they last a little longer if you treat your brush badly. It won't last you as long as it could. So this is my flat brush, one of the ones I use most often. Once I get it dirty, I swirl it around in the water, just like that. Make sure that there's not too much paint residue on it. And then I dab it on the cloth and then it's either ready to go it again or it can sit there long enough until I have time to properly clean it, give it a good thorough cleaning in the sink. As long as it's moist, it'll be fine. 
Um, if you happen to get acrylic paint on your clothes, your best bet is to douse it in water, throw it in, throw the article of clothing in a bucket of water and just try to get everything out while it's still wet. If it dries, it will not come out. Um, so consider that hopefully you're wearing some uh, clothes that you'll be able to get paint on. All right. So having covered that, let's begin. So again, I've sort of got my canvas there. I made my canvas a little bit damper by adding some water, just spraying some water earlier. I use the spray bottle frequently just to um, add a little bit of moisture to my paint if it's too dry, if my palette's too dry. I'm going to start actually by doing an underpainting. You can see this is around the edges of this. You'll see, if I move it up very close, there's a little bit of brown here and here and here. That's called an underpainting. And it's like a sketch, but you don't necessarily have to cover it up completely. Um, sometimes it actually looks very good to have these little, just a little bit peeking out from around beside the mountains. It adds contrast and that gives it a little bit more vibrancy and color. So I'm going to start with my burnt sienna. I don't need a lot, just a little bit. And I've got my brush wet, not, not, not totally wet, damp, I should say. And mix a little bit. And I'm going to find sort of the center of my painting. And I'm going to draw a line just like that in the center. Okay. And that's going to be the base of the mountain right here. Above that, I'm going to paint a little bump, a hill. There. We can change that a little bit. Looking again at my sketch, I'm going to go just a little bit over here. I'm going to start my next mountain. Here we go. That's probably good enough. I can join this now. No problem. And then we do the other side. And I'm right-handed, so I like to start on the right and work left. Uh, if you're left-handed, you may find the opposite. <laughs> a big round top of a mountain. There. All right. And then you can take a straight line, just sort of back that way. And that will be the water line later on. There we go. A little bit too bright there. Okay. All right. Hopefully that's a little bit better for you. Okay. So I finished sort of the back mountains. I'm going to go for this mountain over here. And that starts a little bit down here. Yeah, right there, maybe. And... Nice high mountain there. there. Brush became dry, so I'll fill it in a little bit now that it's a little wetter. Okay. 
And again, sort of a, a matching peak on the other side. This one can be there. That looks pretty good. Just fill in. Fill in those lines. That's again going to be the watermark or the top of the water in the bay or the lake when we get there. Finally, we've sort of got a three mountain ranges or three mountains on either side. So we'll work on this one. Let's start it back here. Go up. Maybe make another funky shape there. Paint back. Just cover that all straight, straight back the edge of the canvas. And now we have one more to go. In my sketch, I made this sort of a, a softer hill. I think I'll do the same thing here. So just up and down, wobbly hand. There. Back across like that. Okay, so there's my sketch. Move the light away so you can see a little bit better. There we go. So we now have six mountains. I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to clean it. All right. So the next step is to mix a large portion of the color that we're going to use as the base for the mountains and the cloud and the reflections in the water here. Um, I'm going to use a mix of ultramarine blue and raw umber, okay? I'm gonna choose the ultramarine blue because there's blue in the sky, but this one doesn't turn quite so strongly to blue as the phthalo blue shade did. It retains a little bit more of its purplish tone. Um, and the raw umber is a little bit, believe it or not, it's sort of a warm color on the red. So that's going to input a little bit of purpley hue into the ultramarine, but also tone it down so it has a bit of a graying quality. Perfect for rock at dawn, kind of a blue-gray, purple kind of color. So I'm going to need a lot of this. So I'll make a big lump of that there. And I'm going to take, you can take any brush, it doesn't matter. Add some raw umber. I'm going to mix it around. And I can decide to add more blue or more purple or more, sorry, raw umber, depending on how it looks. In this case, I think the raw umber has overpowered the ultramarine by quite a lot. I'm 
move that a bit to the side. And add a little bit more ultramarine blue here. And mix it some more. So there we go. I want a shade that's just slightly purple. And I can always create more, but sometimes it's easier if we I'll go faster if I have it ready at the moment and don't need to work on recreating it all the time. So a little, just pile it up into a little ball there. Rinse off your brush. Now that we have that color, we're ready to set up for the rest of it. So I'll need a little bit of white. And I'm going to use crimson red and lemon yellow. Okay. You don't need a significant amount of these colors. A little will do you. Um, except perhaps the white. You'll want a little bit more white than that. So you see I've got my bluey purpley mix here for the clouds, white, crimson, and yellow there. I'm going to take my flat brush and I'm going to start by putting white on the sky about where I want this patch of light sky to be here. So. There we go. So this patch of light sky should be, we'll paint, start by painting that white. So here we go. Put some white paint on there. Give it a flat top. We need that back. Okay flat on top and of course paint around your little your sketch here and if you do get it on the sketch that's fine if you really want to hide the sketch you can do that too I like to keep my underpaintings visible like I said I feel like they add contrast and vibrancy to the finished product now Without cleaning my brush, I'm going to take just the corner of it and dip it into this yellow. Okay. I'm going to make a little bit of a, a smear on the palette to get it mixed in just a bit. And I'm going to turn the brush so that it's wide and short. Okay. So that we've got the, the, flat side is going back and forth here and I am just going to take it and do some back and forth strokes across and 
and color that piece of sky a pale yellow. Okay, there we go. Now initially, I have this dark sort of cloud here covering this bottom part here, but I think I'm going to skip doing that and go straight to the crimson. So I'm going to clean my brush now. Just dip it there. Dab it. Oh, I got a little bit of purple on there from the There we go. I'm going to take the crimson. I am going to mix it with a little bit of white. Not a whole lot, but a little bit. And also I need to make sure I mix enough that I can cover a whole swath sort of across. I'm going to end up putting some in this space, in the corners here, maybe just a smidgen over there. So I need to make sure I have enough to cover all of that space in a... pink crimson color. This effect is achieved sort of at dawn when the sun has risen enough to reflect up onto the clouds and then down, but not actually high enough to shine down on anything in the scenery. So that's how that's how this effect is created in nature. So we're painting the bottoms of the clouds here, or bottoms of the big heavy cloud. Go through this. Okay, so there's my clouds with the sun reflecting up and down off of them. I've got one comment here. Hi, Zineb. Thanks for joining me. All right. So I'm going to clean my brush off again. And again, pat it dry over here. Still more crimson coming out of it. Okay, that's a bit better. Now, I'm going to take this dark blue. I'm actually going to start around the edges of it, because this time I need to add some white to it. And uh, some crimson got in there too, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And again, I'm going to need enough. To cover a good portion of the sky. So I'm going to just first do a line across. A straight line, maybe not too thick, but mixes in with the crimson a little bit. That's fine. There we go. Just there. and now you could decide where you'd like to have some puffy mountains. So I like this three puff structure. I've got going here. So I'm going to paint it on. Just start over here and puff, puff, puff. Uh -huh. I remember when I used to paint clouds, I'd always think, clouds are so random. I have to make the painting random. But after several years now, I've come to understand that clouds are actually far more patterned than I used to give them credit for. So the fact that there's one big band across the sky seemingly uniform of this big cloud that, that you know that's not as odd as you might think now while the paint's wet I'm going to take just a little bit of white here and make a slightly paler gray there. I'm going to mix it in to where I'd like to see more fluffiness here or more texture to the cloud, I think. Hmm. Maybe need even more white there. If I do this while it's wet, the wet on wet effect causes the white paint to blend in with the dark paint. And the variety of colors you get almost by accident as a result tends to be more visually interesting than if you just wait for it to dry and then put another layer on. So that's why I tend to like this, the wet on wet technique here. There. All right. I think I'm happy with that. Well, maybe just another. Go outside the lines here. All right, back to cleaning my brush. Now the remainder of the sky, we're going to treat like we did this yellow section down here. So we're going to start by painting it white. And if your white's contaminated, contaminated a little bit like mine is, watch that you don't get all the colors on there. But if you do get some, I've got a tiny bit of crimson in there. That's OK. And 
just again fill the space with this white paint And the effect is that we've got this long, bold, heavy cloud standing out against these light, wispy feathers that we've got in the background here. So spread it out somewhat evenly. And this is where a smaller canvas is sometimes better because you can see the larger your canvas is, the more paint you have to use, the longer it takes to put it on, and the more chance you have of some part of it drying while you're applying the rest of it. This is also why I did that little spray on my canvas at the start so that it would not dry quite so quickly. So again, just like we did down here, I'm going to take a little bit of white, mix it with a tiny bit of yellow. I'm going to start feathering in this corner. Again, I'm taking the flat brush, I have the flat brush sort of angled flat across, and I'm just going to zip it across, zip, 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 zip. And that causes it to blend and gives it that nice feathery cloud kind of feel. I'm going to make the middle area kind of a light crimson and the corners yellow. That seemed to work well before. Makes a little bit more white in and go. Maybe I'll put the cloud on an angle more this time. Maybe I should say the colors. Clean my brush before I switch over to light streaks of pink. I'm actually going to keep my brush just a little bit damp because I can pick up. pink from there. Hmm. That is a little thin. Just about running out of white. I'll, I'll reapply more white if I need to, but I think I can do it just like this. So again, taking the brush and going across. a few down there. Because it's so strong, I'm going to dry my brush off and just go over that again and try to mix it in a little bit more with the black. Or the black, the white. And I think I think my white has dried quite quickly. So I shall add more white. And here, ah, there we go. That's more of the effect I was hoping to have. Keep the brush. Wet there. And blend it all in.
So this is almost dried, which means my ability to move with the wet on wet effect is starting to dry up too. Add a little bit of water on my brush to see if I can't make it move just a little bit more. But after that, it's pretty much set. So there we go. There's our sky. We'll clean up our brush. And we're ready to begin the mountains. So still using the flat brush, I'm going to start by adding two more colors to my palette, a little bit of raw umber or a brown color, and I'm going to go with a touch of, you know what, no. I was going to say, I could use a green, but I think I may just mix some of the yellow in, because between the yellow and the purple, purple bluish color, I will end up with a bit of a green. So, and that way I can save my paint. I'm going to start by painting this painting right this mountain right here. I'm going to do a full strength purpley color and just start filling it in there. And I'm moving my brush in this sort of irregular pattern. So that's going to create short, variated brush strokes and patches of dark and light on the canvas, which gives the mountain a texture. So. I'm a little outside the line here, but not too worried. That's fine. And I'm going to take my brush still with some paint on it. I'm actually going to just lightly touch the water with a tip. Just touch. There we go. I'm going to, for the reflection of this mountain in the water, I'm going to run my brush back and forth. Again, flat shaped so that, like, like this. So I'm actually going to have to lift that up a little bit just to make it easier to... I'm going to go right up to the bottom of the mountain and just try to copy the shape 
sort of in the back and forth motions of the brush on the water there. Okay. So that's mountain one. Mountain two, I'm gonna alter the color of the paint just slightly. I think I'm gonna add a bit of yellow to it. Make it slightly green. And add the tiniest bit of white to it. That's going to give it a bit of a distancing effect. So things get lighter as they move towards the background. But not too much lighter. The white I'm using is titanium white, which tends to be quite strong when blending with other colors. So I should be cautious. All right, and on to mountain two. Again, short brush strokes. And the same but different color by adding that bit of yellow in there makes it stand apart a little bit from the other mountains. And again, adds more variety and color to your painting so that I mean, there is a lot of dark gray, bluish color, but there's also a lot of different types of that. So. And again, I'm gonna take my, my brush, still, full of paint mostly, and I'm just gonna touch the top of the water there, shake off any drops. And again, thinking of the shape of this mountain, I'm going to zip it back and forth like so. Maybe a somewhat stronger color too, so put more paint on my brush and go at it again. All right, so there's mountain number two. Now you can guess by now we're going to sort of slightly alter the color on this side, make it a little whiter. And again, a little paler, a little different, and just keep going back until we get the palest mountain at the back. So I'm gonna work on doing that now. We got the, the blue color. Our blue gray color. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit of burnt umber. Make it a little more brownish. Ooh, again, so strong. Maybe I'll use that on a further back mountain. I'm gonna add some white. I'm gonna run out of white soon, so I'll have to restock up on that. But at the moment, So here we go. Short strokes. Or long strokes sometimes. Nice thing about wet paint is you can always go back over and Stroke the paint again. Yeah, I've got spots here which is too well, and that's fine. Again, a little bit more variation. Some spots of dark umber. Mm -hmm. 
And there we go. Mountain number three. And again, dip my brush. I'm going to mix it ever so slightly on the palette here. And think, 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 think. Swish, 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 back and forth. And now I've got not only, you know, this bottom part to shadow, but also this top part is visible coming over here. So I'm going to make the reflection come down, mix a little bit with this reflection, kind of a point somewhere around here, and then go back a little bit over that way. Mountain number three is complete. We'll move on to mountain number four. What can I do now? Well, I've got a little bit of brown here. It's a little bit more brownie brown. I'll add some more white to it. So here I've got a nice tall mountain that's going to be a little bit browner maybe than the others. All right, a little bit of wet. This is sparse enough now that I'm actually going to need to try to scrape some of it together with my wet brush. Make sure I've got enough paint on my brush to do the reflection this time. So scrape it together. And then again, we've got to consider that the mountain comes up behind this other mountain. So the reflection is going to go down to about here and then maybe just head over towards the edge of the page. So zip, zip, zip. More paint. Yeah, a bit more water. Adding water can be a good thing. It can, you know, free up your, loosen up your paint so that it flows easier and looks more liquid, is easier to control. Dry brushing or painting with a brush where the paint is almost dry or there's not enough on it is a technique but it's not one I find that I like to use for water. So keeping the paint moist or wet avoids this dry brushing look, but it certainly thins your paint as well. And so then your paint gets lighter and lighter and thinner and thinner. And it doesn't, that doesn't always look good either. Um, one of these paintings here. Yeah, this one. For this sample, I let the brush get too dry and you can see there's a lot of 
sort of dry brushing where you can see the texture of the canvas as white between the paint. It's not a bad effect sometimes, but I find it doesn't look very watery. Okay, I need a little bit more white for my palette. Because we're going into now sort of the last half of the mountains, last three mountains. They're further back, which means they are going to be paler. I'll add a touch of yellow to this one. I'll make it a little bit more greenish. And we'll just go over the big old round. And again, I like to use those short brush strokes, build up some texture. Now they're getting a bit smaller, so it's becoming a bit easier. I don't even know if I really need to wet the brush at this point, so I'm gonna, I will use a section I palette more to flatten it out again so it's that flat shape. And just zip, 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 zip. You might see a little bit coming out here, but not much. So there we are. Add a little bit more of the purple to that. A little bit more white. Maybe a tiny bit of this crimson. Why not? And again, working on the second last mountain. As the mountains fade to the background, texture becomes less important because it's not likely you're going to see it from that far off. So. I still do a little bit of it, but more for fun. <laughs> and again, I'm trying to flatten my brush, which has become overloaded with paint now. Get a little flat and go back and forth to make those reflections. Maybe some over here. And that's good. Finally, the last mountain is just the palest of them all, so Add a chunk of white there, and then just go over the last one. Here again, flat brush and zoom, 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 zoom. there. 
There we go. So. Clean my brush. Now going over these again is going to give them more texture and more definition. So I'm going to start again with the darkest color. And just go over the bottom of this mountain. And make it sort of as solid and black as I can. This mountain, again, I'm going to add a little bit more yellow to it to make it a little green. And again, just along the bottom, make it dark. And at this point, I know that I've got a strong enough base color that I'm not too worried about putting the wrong color on top and messing everything up. So I'm moving a little bit quicker now. That one was a mix of, I think, the umber. Or we did this one next, didn't we? So if I don't get, you know, an exact shade of what it was before, I'm okay with that. Again, just adding sort of texture and variety in there. Subtle. We're just working the bottoms of the mountains here, creating a deeper shadow. And that one was a little bit greeny. Clean my brush so I can get a slightly greener gray shade going here. And you'll notice, yes, I'm picking spots on my palette that have sort of remnants of the similar color and adding dark or white to that as I feel necessary. It's a good way to use up paint. There we go, that's a little bit better. If you've got, you know, that leftover paint on your palette it also, again, keeps you within that same color range. That's all dried up. Too light. Yeah, see everything's dried up in this I have to do straight from beginning. That 
one's wrong, that one's right. I need more white on my palette again. So just a bit at the end, yeah. All right. And then for the final bit on the mountains, we'll go back and we'll add some white or lighter highlights to the top. Not white, but so again, start with the dark color, add white to it until it's light, and then And these definitely, I would say, keep short, short brush strokes. Chunky, I think is the word I would use. So. Chunky brush strokes. to green Now you're probably wondering, wouldn't it be easier just to do the mountain, the highlights, the middle shade, and the shadows all in one go before moving on to the next mountain? And you would probably be correct. However, I like having the base color of the mountains. And I like having slight differences in shade between the lowlights and the highlights, which is what you get when you're trying to match as opposed to just using the same color. So I like to do it this way. Certainly. You could do it the other way if you liked. So you can go back, play the video again, but just stop it every time I do a mountain and do all three stages at once right there. Apologize, folks, if you're hearing the background of my phone going off. Telemarketers, what can you do? 
And again, finally, just a very light shade on this back over here. There you go. So that's our mountains. We've got slightly different shades on each one and that sort of builds up, makes it visually interesting, I should say. And now I can clean my brush. My palette's gotten kind of full, so I'm actually just going to take my trusty spray bottle. I'm going to spray the palette just going to wipe off the bottom colors here. One thing I forgot to mention when I was talking about cleanup is cleaning up your palette. These paints can contain some pretty nasty heavy metals, for example, cadmium, uh, things we don't really want in our waterways. So when you're cleaning your palette at the end, it's a good idea to take do what I just did, spray it with a spray bottle, wipe it off with some paper towel, and throw that in the garbage. That way it ends up in the landfill, not in our water. So. So again, for this, we're going to take a similar approach to what we did in the sky here. We're going to take our white. Actually, this white is, well, I'll use up the rest of it. I'm almost out of white. Take the white and cover the area of the water that hasn't already been covered by shadows. So get it nice and wet. It doesn't have to be you know, exact. You'll leave spaces obviously between the water and the edge of the shot or the white and the edge of the shadows here on the water. And that's okay. And I need to, there's a little lip on the bottom of my easel here that makes it hard to get to the bottom of the canvas. So I will hold it a little bit. There we go. So quickly before that dries, I'm going to add some of my crimson and some of my yellow. And you know what? I'm going to take a clean brush. I'll leave this one at the side for a second. I'm going to work on this crimson bar with nearly full strength crimson. So, a slightly wet brush. So, the crimson cloud was again sort of tinted with a little bit of white. And we'll sort of aim, that's my center point, equal distance down and just start going 
like this back and forth. Again, I've got the brush in the flat position. And I'm gonna spread a little bit larger than it is in the sky because it's a very pretty color and I can. Try to keep the brush stroke smaller as I get into the distance, a little bit bigger up close. There we go. Dip my brush in water again. Actually, clean this brush off. Sorry, I realize I have the, the other brush with the white still on it standing by. Take my white brush and begin feathering with the yellow paint here and anywhere else I would expect to see a yellow. Now you can go over the shadows you created previously. Don't of course feel like you know they're they're set in stone. And you should because the mixture is going to give it you know, again more color, a more realistic look. Again, that crimson or pale, pale crimson, I should say, is here. Spread it around. Yep. Getting too dry down here, so I'll add a little bit of water. And again, I'm roughly following the sky up here, but don't feel like you're stuck fast to it. You can always embellish a little bit for beauty's sake. Feel like I need to go over some of that with white. Just to soften some of these spots where it was a little too strong. All right, now we've got the rest of this cloud to cover in. So again, take some of that dark purpley gray shade, mix it in with some white. Until it sort of matches your clouds up there. And away we go. Can we go into here a little bit? At this point, I'm sort of just filling in anywhere I feel like it kind of needs it. And keeping that back and forth or horizontal motion that's going to sort of 
give the impression of water. I like that. Last step. I'll clean your brush off for the final time. For this last step, you'll need some white. So if you have some on your cam or on your palette, use that. If you don't, then add a little bit more. I take just the pure white and go along the bottoms of the mountains here. For some reason, a thin layer of white just seems to make them stand out. And I do sort of feather that down into the reflections. Again, with that horizontal flat brush stroke. Like that. And then the rest of the white I can use just to sort of blend in things. So anywhere I feel like I want things to blend a little bit more, maybe where I just want things to be a little bit brighter, I can put another horizontal white line in there. Okay. Now I know we've run a bit over time, but if anyone has any questions, oh, I got pink in my, oh, well, pink's fine. Any questions, feel free to ask them now by the com in the comments. I think that does it. There we are. So thank you so much for joining me and especially for those who stayed till the bitter end. Um, I hope you had a lot of fun. I know I did. And we'll see you in a month or so, approximately, for our next paint night, which will be Acrylic Still Life. Hopefully yours has come out looking someone like this today. Thank you once again, and have a good night.